Hey, what's up? David Alex here for Ideas to Creations. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your model or subject jump out of a picture, just like in this example. It's actually a very basic technique and it's pretty quick to do. So just go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is to download the image from Stock Exchange. It's called Young Girl Dancing Happy in a Field, or the number is 1386581. And you need to notify African FI that you're going to use the image. And uh, you can go ahead and bring it into Photoshop once it's downloaded. Okay, so here is my image and I'm ready to go. First of all, we need to isolate the area that's going to be still part of the image. Now, we're not actually going to rescale this down. We're just going to cut it off in a rectangular shape. So I'll grab my rectangle tool. Hold down shift to make a square. And we'll go to select transform selection and we're going to turn this into a perspective view so hold down Control, shift and alt grab this top corner and drag and you'll see that uh, it squeezes in like that and then we'll just grab this top with no modifiers and just drag it down and basically just try our best to get uh, make it look like a picture lying on a surface now this really depends on what sort of style you're going for. So I'm going to move this over to the edge and just make sure that I don't let this corner go out of the frame. And it's good that she actually ends up right there in the middle. Maybe shift it just a little bit. Um, let's see now about there. That's good. So I'll hit enter. And then we're going to turn this into a layer of its own. So I'll select the background and actually drag it to the new layer button going to create a new layer and then I'll just click on the layer mask button. So that's going to mask it out. Now I won't see anything because the background is still on. So I'm going to switch it off and you'll see now we just have that section. Now this is going to represent whatever's left in the image. Now for the top section, we're going to need to cut out from the point where this image ends, which is about there. So we could do that by adding a ruler. So I'm going to hit Control R to show the rulers and just drag a guide down there. So I know just where the image ends. And actually, I'm going to go just a bit beyond this line. And then I'll hit Control R to hide the ruler again. And then I can switch on the background again. And now I know I need to cut from this point going upwards. Now, we're also going to take a little shortcut here. The hair is going to be crazy to extract. So what we're going to do is actually use this flat color up here as the background. So I'm going to create a new solid color. And in the settings, I'm just going to click OK, hide it, and then double click in the red box there again. And now I can sample a color from here. So I'll just pick maybe somewhere around here. That's good. Hit OK. And you switch it on, you see it blends pretty much in, uh, pretty well with the background. So that should help. So I'm going to put this um, right below, right above the background. So next, I'll duplicate this again, put it at the top. And this is going to be my top piece. So I guess we should really name this. So we're going to call this in pick. Call this background. And this is going to be top. Nice simple names. No need to complicate things. So at this point, you're going to use your favorite extraction method. You could use the pen tool or the lasso. Uh, I usually try to avoid the lasso because it ends up with hard edges. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the pen tool instead. So I'll start from way below the line and just draw out my path. So I'm just going to fast forward this bit. Now, when you get to this point, because we're actually going to use the same color background, we actually don't need to bother with any of these areas that are inside the, the sky. We're actually trying to get rid of the field and the trees. So I'm just going to cut right around the body. And once I get back here, I'm just going to 
go back in and continue extracting as usual. All right, I'm done drawing my path, and now I'm ready to proceed with converting this into a mask. So with my object selected, sorry, with my layer selected, I'll go to layer, choose a vector mask, and we're going to choose a current path. And once again, we need to switch everything in the back off to see what we've done. So there's a cutting out we've just done. I'm going to remove the guide by going to view, clear guides, and... It's looking good. So next step is we're pretty much done actually. And it's now just to match things up. So I'll go to paths and choose work path and just delete it. Okay, so we're pretty much done, but we just need to fix this blending between the background and the hair side. So I'll switch everything off again and I'll create another new layer. And this is gonna be my new background. So I just call it BG again. And I'll, I'll grab the eyedropper, so let's see, it's usually eye. And I'm going to change the sample size to 31 by 31, so I can get a very average color. Now you'll notice that there's a gradient going across the sky, uh, starting from this area where it's lighter, going towards here where it's dark. So I'm going to select um, this color here, which is going to go as my primary color there. And then I'm going to swap and click somewhere down here where the hair is which is the darkest area. And I'll swap again, grab my gradient tool, and with this BG guy selected, I'm just going to switch these two back on. And um, you'll notice that I'm still looking at this background, so I'm going to switch it off. And then I'll draw from that corner down to where I sampled again. And obviously it's not going to work immediately. I actually need to kind of do some trial and error here until it fits. There we go. So once you draw it really well, you know, it just really uh, clicks in. So just to make this blend a bit easier, I'm going to grab the path. Oops. I need to grab my direct selection tool. And I'll just grow these out a little bit. And then I'll grab my top layer. Take the, oops, I just showed some of the trees there, but that's fine. And I'll create a layer mask. Grab the brush tool. Hardness zero, nice big size. And set it to black. And then we're just going to brush out like this with a very big, nice feathered brush so that it helps it mix in a bit better, especially on this side. All right, so that's done. First, I'm going to select this and unlink it. Hit Control T and just bring this up slightly so that it's not touching the bottom of the frame again. And hit Enter. So what I do need to do is actually grab Top, In Pick. Um, that's actually fine. And I'll take my Move tool. Oops, I need to lock this again. And I'll just move this to the center of the frame. That looks a bit better. Maybe close that, that room up there. And the next step is now to create the border. So I'm going to take the in pick, hold down control and click on the mask so that it becomes a selection. And I'll go select, transform selection, and then I'll hold alt and shift. And then just grow this up just a little bit. And we don't actually want this to be this big. We actually want this gap down here to be bigger than the one up there. So I'll bring this lower a bit and then hold control shift alt and Squeeze these two up so that this sort of widens as it gets closer. All right, that's looking good. So I'll hit enter. And then I'll just create a new solid color. And when you have a selection, it's used as the mask. So I'll just grab, not completely white, but just slightly gray. And then put it below the in pick. That way we have our border. Now I'll, I'll grab uh, that gradient and, sorry, that background and add a gradient overlay. Set the opacity really low. So about there, so that this corner is darker. Maybe I can do it 
uh, let's see 90 degrees I can do it on the on this side actually so I'll drop the opacity down drop the scale down up actually and then hit okay that's looking good now we need to add a small drop shadow right under this uh, border so I'll copy this by just dragging it to the new layer button I want to right click and choose a clear layer style and then I'll change this color to black this needs to go below the white and then control T I'll hold down the control button and this lets you move points individually so I'll just drag this down this way and then because that happens then I'll just drag this in that way so I just have this shadow here at the bottom so it kind of looks like it's folded up a bit and I can also push this down just a bit uh, that's looking good so I'll hit enter and then I'll grab this layer mask go to filter actually I won't use a filter I'll use the mask properties so I'll come here to properties it's already set to masks and then I'll just feather it out until I get a value I like now the good thing with feathering is that you can actually come back and tweak it later now for the another small touch you can add is grab in pick and I'll double click on the image come in here to inner shadow set the opacity up to 100% distance to zero just crank up the size just a little bit and this adds like a vignette inside the border which makes it look even more like an actual photo so click OK that's looking good anyway this is David Alex and uh, that's about it for this tutorial uh, stay tuned to ideas to creations on YouTube or on ideas creations of blogspot.com for more tutorials for Photoshop, After Effects and Cinema 4D. I'll see you in the next one.